Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? My name's Tony. I have to lose weight. This is my vlog. Welcome back for another video. This is week three of looking at the power of habit. We're in chapter three. It's the golden rule of habit change. I enjoyed this chapter. I'm not a huge football fan, but I am from Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, so if I root for football, I'm a Colts fan. And I remember fondly the Tony Dungy years for the Indianapolis Colts along with Peyton Manning. And it was really interesting to read how uh, Coach Dungy used uh, changing habits as a way to make them successful. I'll start out with a quote here on page 61. Champions don't do extraordinary things. They do ordinary things, but they do them without thinking. Too fast for the other team to react. They follow the habits they've learned. It's an interesting concept here. This chapter uh, goes back and forth talking about Coach Dungy's eventual win of the Super Bowl with the Indianapolis Colts, and it talks about how uh, AA approaches uh, helping people with alcohol addiction. Uh, the big nuggets, though, are the are, are really back to the habit loop. Uh, it seems like every week they're sticking stuff in the brains of uh, things. So we had uh, rats one week, and we had monkeys one week, and then this they actually stuck uh, diodes in the brains of alcoholics. But the the big takeaways here is that the habit loop, which is uh, cue, routine, and reward. Uh, the, the golden rule of habit change is that you don't change the cue and the reward. You just change the routine in the middle. So uh, the, the takeaway for me is that it's hard to change the cue and the reward. Uh, you're, you want something to happen. You want a very specific feeling and you have a routine that gets you there. One of the examples they use, like for the alcoholic, uh, some people, their cue and their reward system, the reward they were trying to get to would be to have social interaction. And so they would use alcohol to have social interaction. So the end goal was to have social interaction, but they would change that routine for it to happen a different way. It was really fascinating stuff for me. And I kind of walked away from this chapter with more questions than I had answers uh, I know like in Alcoholics Anonymous, you go through and you make a list of what you think your triggers are or your cues that make you want to drink and then at the same time figure out what uh, the reward is there. I feel like that's that's worthy of doing no matter who you are, especially if you're challenged with something like uh, you know overeating or something like that. Identifying what those cues and those rewards are, I think it has to be the first step so that you can figure out what routine that you want to change. Uh, and the other big part of this chapter was the role of belief. So they did studies where you could, and we'll take it back to the football analogy, uh, Coach Dungy went through, got everybody to change their habits to make the habits almost automatic. But what would happen is in, in stressful times, uh, all that habit work would go out the window and the brain would take over and really the players would kind of overthink what they were doing and they would lose all that automatic habit that they had been practicing and they would choke. They would choke in the time of stress. And also, you know, the uh, person that's working the 12-step program, they do perfectly well until something stressful comes along and then uh, that stressful event would make them jump out and go back and revert to their old habit. Uh, but what they talked about and, and the transformation that happened in the Colts, uh, unfortunately, was uh, around tragedy when Coach Dungy's son lost his life. His team decided that they wanted to win for him. And it, it points to this idea that if you believe in something, uh, you're more likely to stay with it opposed to if you don't have belief. A big component of AA is a spiritual component, uh, primarily a God component. But what the what the chapter here shows that it doesn't necessarily have to be a belief in God. It just has to be a belief in something positive, a belief that you can accomplish the thing that you're accomplishing. And so in the case of the Colts, the thing that they wanted to accomplish is they wanted to make Coach Dungy feel better in the time of his tragedy. And they believe that collectively they could do it. Uh, the other big takeaway is the power of groups. And it kind of made me excited because we all have this group now. We're connected virtually, but uh, I, I do, I, it was a really eye opening chapter where you're like, okay, uh, 
we're not here by ourselves trying to uh, summon up belief, uh, but we see other examples of people who are successful with our weight loss and other people that are there to encourage. And so it, it really is interesting. Here's the summation quotes t- from the end of the chapter. This is page 92. If we keep the same cue and the same reward, a new routine can be inserted, but that's not enough. For a habit to stay changed, people must believe that change is possible, and most often that belief only emerges with the help of a group. Further down, the evidence is clear. If you want to change a habit, you must find an alternative routine, and your odds of success go up dramatically when you commit to changing as part of a group. Belief is essential, and it grows out of a communal experience, even if that community is only as large as two people. It just brings up so many things for me, especially there where it talks about that you can uh, find strength just in two people. The axiom, it is not good to be alone. Uh, Yeah, it's super powerful, and I'm super excited to have this community. Uh, I'm just going to leave these things. We can stew on them a little bit, but my question is this. Do you have a good way to inventory your cues and your rewards? Have you done this kind of exercise before? I would love to see some feedback how maybe you've done that. You could leave that comment below. And what do you think about this idea of uh, the power of community and that belief is uh, encouraged by community? I think this is a great chapter. The book is going to transition into how habits are effective in organizations. Uh, We'll have to get into chapter four, see if that's still applicable to what we're doing here or if it's time to move on to the next book. But what I really hope is uh, more information on how we can change these routines, how we can identify our cues and rewards. Uh, I'm hoping that that if you've read ahead, let me know if that's coming up uh, and picked up the book yet. The link is in the description. Uh, also, the next book that we're going to read, the link for that is in the description also. Thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you had a great week. We weighed in, we worked out, and now we have uh, worked on our minds a little bit. I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you back Monday when we weigh in again. My name's Tony. I got to lose weight, and this is my vlog. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.